August 14th, 2022, 7.15 a.m., Vermont Shopping Center, parking lot. You're going to think I'm crazy. Even I think I might be crazy. I'm about to head into an abandoned mall where, rumor has it, six people went missing last year. The message boards I'm on think the Vermont Shopping Center is suspect number one for the most likely entrance to the back rooms in my entire state. The six folks that disappeared last year, and God, probably dozens of people in the last decade, were usually homeless or addicts or one of the other types who would be willing to set up camp in an abandoned mall. As far as I can tell, they weren't missed, weren't searched for, weren't noticed at all when they vanished. That doesn't sit well with me. Ladies and gentlemen, I've spent the last six months since I heard the rumors about Vermont getting ready. I'm going to walk into the mall in a few minutes with the intent of discovering if it does indeed link to the back rooms. I'm going to find out what happened to all the rumored missing people, and I'm going to record it all, both on camera and here in my audio journal as backup. Damn, this is starting to feel real. Okay, uh, real quick before I get started. Let me lay out my gear and prep so you know I'm not walking into this one blind. First, a little about me. My name is Todd Daniels, 34, height about 5 foot 10, and physical fitness levels, alright. I mean, I've been preparing for this for a while. Mostly cardio, push-ups, drinking my orange juice, all of that. I'm not ready for the Olympics or anything, but if something in there chases me, I'm not going to collapse after running 100 yards. Gear. Alright kids, this is where I'm feeling confident. I've got an Osprey Atmos 65 liter backpack, the best overall option for the camper on the go, with enough food and water for 7 days. Mostly a mix of MREs, protein bars, and other non-perishables. If I run out of water, well, if I run out of a week's worth of water walking around an empty shopping mall, I might be FUBAR at that point. But if there is a need, I do also have a water purification kit. On top of that, I've got an ultra-lightweight tent, a sleeping bag, two flashlights, headlamp, lantern, GoPro, my iPhone, two power banks and chargers, and plenty of batteries. Why would I need a tent inside a mall, you might ask? Well, if my theory is correct, Vermont links to a portion of the back rooms that could be meteorologically diverse. That means, in plain language, weird freaking weather is possible, even indoors. Wild, right? Okay, here's where I may lose some of you with my gear choices. I'm also bringing a Glock 19X with three 17 round magazines and an additional 50 rounds of ammunition. I don't expect to need a gun, but well, you know what they say. I'd rather have it and not need it than need it and not have it. If nothing else, the mall could be dangerous in normal, boring ways. It is still a major hangout for the local homeless population, or it was. After the most recent disappearances, I think Vermont has a nasty enough reputation that even desperate people are going to think twice about visiting. Anyway, final miscellaneous gear, a couple of knives, first aid kit, duct tape, lighter, fire starter, notebook with pens, um, am I forgetting anything? Uh, probably. Oh yeah, I also have a flare gun. Maybe it's not the most practical, but it was on sale at the military surplus store, so I figured I could treat myself. I'm going to end my first entry here, and I'll go ahead and film my intro and get some footage of my first steps into the mall. Wish me luck. August 14th, 11 a.m., Vermont Shopping Center Atrium. We might have a problem, uh, actually might have a few problems. Okay, first thing, I got into the mall with no issues. The door wasn't even locked. Even if it was locked, that all rusted to pieces a long time ago. Vermont is a mess. Picture an abandoned mall, decades of decay and neglect creeping in over the walls and under the tiles. Got it in your mind? Alright, add a few more years of rust and cobwebs, dirt everywhere, and stains in a kaleidoscope of nasty colors. There's a big fountain in the middle of the mall, the kind of place where kids would toss in pennies to make wishes. You'd expect something like that to be all dried up, but when I came in here a few hours ago, I found it damn near flooded. It's bad water, green and thick. I could smell it from where I climbed in through a broken window near the old J.C. Penney's. It smelled like oil and dead fish. At least there's a lot of sunshine coming in from all the busted skylights in the ceiling. So, the problem. Number one, there's no reception inside the mall. A complete dead zone. No bars. It's not a complete surprise, but I was hoping I might catch a patch of connection here and there. 
especially in areas where the roof is falling in. Nada. If I need to call for help, I guess I'm glad I brought the flare gun. A bigger issue, though, is that there's something messing with my GoPro. Any video that I record seems to not save correctly on playback. The files are corrupted, or there's a malfunction with the camera, or user error, or... <sighs> crap. Or whatever. It doesn't matter what's causing the issue. All the video is wrecked. Wish I'd thought about setting up tech support before stepping into Vermont. This place is even rougher than I expected. I remember that the mall was on its last legs already when I came here as a kid, but you'd think this place had been left to nature for 50 years, not 10 or 15. There's moss everywhere. Most of the windows are broken. The emptiness is just soaked in deep. I haven't seen any people yet. Some raccoons, a ton of birds in the rafters and smashed out skylights, maybe even a coyote in an old hot topic, but no people. I'm going to keep trying to get the GoPro figured out. Sometimes it will record, but the video is all funky and distorted. Good thing I brought the recorder. And that's it for now. I think I hear something farther up. Like every successful horror movie survivor, I'm going to investigate. August 14th, noonish. I really wish I hadn't gone to investigate. It was rats. It was so many rats. What's that thing when a bunch of rats get their tails tied together? A rat king or something? Yeah, this was more like a rat emperor. I found an entire trash can full of squirming brown and gray shapes. Maybe they're stuck in there, trapped and unable to get out over the lid. Christ, they were big. It's funny now, but at the time, I freaked a little and pulled my gun and everything. The rats weren't impressed. I'm going to try to set up a home base in the Dick's Sporting Goods store that's one of the anchors for the mall. The light is fading a bit, even though it's early. It must be clouds. I hope it's not about to start raining. All the holes in the ceiling are going to let in all that water. No wonder the fountain wasn't dried up. There's a smell in here that seems to show up all over the mall, at least the areas I've explored so far. It's this rainy mildew odor, which makes sense. I'm sure the walls have more mold than insulation at this point. August 14th, 5 p.m. Vermont Shopping Center, Sporting Goods. Eh, it's raining. I was right about the janky mall ceiling not being much protection from the elements. Water is streaming inside in columns through every hole and smashed out skylight. It's hunkering down in the sporting goods store, and it's relatively dry at least. You know, subconsciously, I think I was hoping that there might be some supplies left, but the place has long since been picked clean. It's just row after row of empty shelves and dirty linoleum. I was able to set up my tent and general campsite before the rain arrived. Hopefully it'll clear up soon and I can get back to exploring the mall. I'm already tired of this sporting goods store. Something about the yellow tinted beige paint and the emptiness bugs me. Also, the mildew stench is worse here than the mall atrium. Uh, I can hear the rain picking up. Even though it's only the afternoon, it's already nearly pitch black inside the mall. I'm recording this entry with my headlamp on. Oh, a quick update on the phone and GoPro. Uh, still zero reception, and now video won't record at all either. Maybe it's a storm? I don't know, my recorder seems to work. It sounds like the roof above me literally just sprang a leak, and now it's pinging off the top of my tent. Great. I'm going to see about a quick cold dinner and maybe a nap. Signing out for now. Love, Todd. Uh, P.S. Dear future Todd, next time you do this, remember to pack some bourbon. August 14th, 10 p.m. Well, I just officially met my first Vermont resident. I managed to fall asleep for a few hours after dinner. I was woken up about 45 minutes ago by something crashing through the aisles deep within the store. I'll be honest with you, I had a moment or three of pure panic. Eventually, I managed to haul myself out of the tent with a flashlight and the Glock. The store around me was dark, absolute blackness other than the bright beam of my light. I moved slowly, sweeping the aisles until another noise caused me to crouch down and freeze. Whoever my visitor was, they were thrashing around like a madman on fire. I managed to convince my legs to duck walk towards the sound so I could lean out with the flashlight and the gun. 
glowing circles of light stared back at me. It took me a moment to realize there was a shape behind the dots and that the glow was actually a reflection. The raccoon watched me, unblinking for several seconds, and then it was gone so fast I couldn't track it as it disappeared into the blackness in the store. I'll admit, I was a little shook. It took me a few minutes to pull myself together, do a quick sweep of the store, then head back to the tent to collect my thoughts. Two things about the encounter keep playing on a loop in my head. The first, that was the biggest raccoon I've ever seen in my life, bigger than my childhood dog, Scout, who was a lab mix. I mean, it couldn't actually have been that big though, right? Might have been my eyes playing tricks on me in the dark. Speaking of eyes though, that's what really freaked me out. It was hard to tell with the glare, but when the animal looked away before it ran, I got a better look at its eyes. They seemed almost human. I don't think I'm getting any more sleep tonight. August 15th, 8am. I immediately fell asleep after recording the last entry. It's almost like a superpower. I can sleep anytime, anywhere. Sometimes a little too deeply. Note to future Todd. Next time you do something like this, figure out a way to set up pans on a string or another alarm system. Or bring some claymores. According to my watch, it's 8 in the morning, but it's still pitch black inside the mall. The rain let up at least, but no sunshine at all is cutting through. There might be another storm on the way, so I'll stick close to home base for my first trip. The smell is getting worse. It's particularly nasty in the northwest corner of the store, so that's the direction I'm going to be heading through the mall. It's cold too. I mean, still in the 70s I'd guess, but that's chilly for Maryland in August. Alright, wish me luck. August 15th, 10am. Burmont Shopping Center, Fountain. Stopping for a quick lunch, or maybe brunch? Nothing out of the ordinary to report yet. The mildew smell actually faded after I left the sporting goods store. It hasn't gotten any lighter though, so the cloud cover must be insane. And it's a little chillier. Is it possible the mall's air conditioning is still working? It doesn't seem likely, given how run down this place is. It would be like finding a perfectly tuned piano on a shipwreck. The only other explanation for the temperature I can think of, though, is maybe I'm getting closer. I'm glad I packed some warmer clothing, though, just in case. August 15th, 11 a.m. I just heard screaming. The panicked, someone might be dying kind of screaming. It was far away, but I couldn't tell how far with how dark it is inside the mall. I can barely see ten feet in front of me without my flashlight up. Not exactly the sort of environment you want to be in when you hear shrieking. <sighs> Shit. Uh, Alright, I'm a little rattled. The screaming didn't last long, but I think it was headed towards me before it stopped. There's a strange echo in the mall with how empty and open the main area is and the height of the ceiling. I ducked into a storefront when I heard the yelling, and I'm still sitting here now, 30 minutes later, just listening. <sighs> no, nothing. I've got the Glock out, and that's a small comfort at least while I sit cowering behind the register of some defunct clothing place. I figure I'll record this and wait another 30 before I step out. The screaming was garbled, but I can't shake the feeling that I caught a word in the noise. I think they were saying, run. August 15th, 3pm. A uh, carpet. I found carpet. Well, okay, All right. deep breaths. I'm trying not to get excited. I came into Burmont hoping to find a way into the back rooms, but not expecting it. Hell, I figured if I could get footage of some spooky shadows and thumping noises, that would be quality material for the channel. Of course, I still can't film anything and nothing is working, but part of me didn't believe I'd ever… Alright, focus up Todd. Carpet. Wet, beige, boring carpet. I noticed it as I was circling around the back of the mall on my way back to home base. I was, uh, you know, bravely avoiding the section of Vermont that I thought the screaming came from. It's still so dark I can only move around by flashlight, so I didn't even register the change from dirty tile to soggy carpet until I heard the echo of my progress. Somewhere between an abandoned Jamba Juice and an empty Hot Topic, the typical mall tile gave way to this short, shag carpeting. I went back and checked. There's a line, like the tide mark on a beach uneven and rough where the change happens. It makes no logical sense for carpet just to show up covering this entire section of Burmont. Wouldn't it be wild if this was real? 
I was considering going back to Dick's to recoup for the day, but I've got most of my supplies with me, and I gotta keep looking. I'm going to push on. Worst case scenario, the mall's not that massive. I can make a full loop and be back at home base in an hour if I don't stop to go through every shop. August 15th, afternoon. Note to future Todd, next time you encounter what seems like an anomaly, don't just chase after it like a kid after an escape balloon. After I found the carpet crawling all over the mall floor, I followed it, quickly but carefully, flashlight cutting a path through the midday darkness. It's getting worse, too. The dark. I don't know how. How can you have less visibility than pitch black? I don't know, but Vermont found a way. I feel the darkness pressing in on me, rushing in behind me as I'm walking across what feels like an infinite, damp carpet. The full disclosure, I'm a little afraid that I'm inhaling some fumes or whatever and it's messing with my head. An old mall like this, there's gotta be mildew and spores and toxins and crap like that circulating through the air, right? Because either I'm starting to hallucinate, or I've passed about a dozen stores in the last half hour that I'm positive don't exist. I only caught a glimpse of the storefronts, and I'm trying to keep moving, especially since the temperature is dropping. But here are a few examples. Donovan's Red Meat. It looked like a butcher shop in the mall. Old Bone, an ice cream place that smelled like roadkill. Marcy's, a classic department store vibe as far as I could tell, but it was so big and so dark that my flashlight couldn't pierce past the entrance. I considered walking in to investigate, but when I got close, I heard the sound of moving air coming from deep within the store. It sort of sounded like something massive breathing. I avoided the store. The carpet continues to squish. The mildew smell is everywhere, and I hear a faint buzzing in the distance. I feel like I'm on edge or something. Part of me wants to turn around and backtrack to home base, collect my gear, and just leave. A bigger part of me wants to keep walking forward. Dear future Todd, I hope we're not about to screw up. August 15th, afternoon, evening. I clipped. I, I, I don't even believe it. Maybe I'm just going nuts, but I think I actually clipped into the back rooms. An hour ago, I was still walking on that damp, obnoxious carpet in a dark mall, and then suddenly, the mall was gone. Like, gone, gone. Instead, I found myself wandering through an office. I mean, it all changed in a literal blink. I'm not sure what I expected, maybe a more gradual shift, but in reality, I remember making a turn around a blind corner, then everything was different. First and foremost was the light, a watered down yellow fluorescent light, but after a full day of darkness, it was an improvement. I can hear the lights buzzing above me like wasps slowly waking up. The carpet is still damp, but at least I can see it clearly now in all its beigey glory. The walls are a kind of yellow beige gray too, and they're narrow too, and the ceiling is low. Compared to the big empty spaces in the mall, I have to admit I'm feeling a little claustrophobic, but it's so hard to process. I think I'm in the back rooms. They're real. The rumors about the mall were right. I've made it. Damn it, I really wish my camera worked. Not that there's much to see. A picture of recently abandoned office anywhere in America. Blank walls, desks with chairs but nothing on them, some filing cabinets, ceiling fans that don't rotate. It's like they emptied out the set for office space just a day or two ago. The smell's not great though, moldy, like milk starting to turn. At least there's light. August 15th. I think today is still the 15th. It feels like I've been walking for hours. Nothing changes. Carpeted hallways and small bare rooms. Walls with peeling yellow paint. Fans that don't turn. Fluorescent lights that just keep buzzing. Deep breath. Okay. This is a once in a lifetime experience. I have plenty of gear and provisions. I can navigate this. Hmm. Navigation. That's an issue I'm noticing. The rooms, the hallways, they all blur together. I'm not saying they're identical, but it's hard to distinguish one space from another when the main differences are the number of crappy office chairs or the configuration of the desks. I've got a sharpie in my pack. 
I'm going to start leaving marks in each room that I visit, and arrows in every hallway indicating which direction I'm traveling. I'm going to get out of here, and even better, I'm going to find some evidence of the back rooms to bring back with me. Dear future Todd, you're welcome for the fame and fortune. August 16th or 17th, Vermont Back Rooms, Level 2. I found stairs a few hours ago, only one flight, so I'm one story above wherever I was before. The rooms are different up here, brighter, a little colder. There's this dampness that pushes in through my clothes. I wish I'd brought some thicker jackets, but August and all. Shit, it feels like it's been months since I first walked into the mall. It's probably only been a few days since I clipped, and my food is holding up okay. I'm getting a little worried about water. Another three or four days, and I'll start running low. However, good news, this level has water. There are full water coolers every few rooms. The big, clear, blue jugs you'd find in most offices complete with those little, crappy paper cups. Now, even if I get desperate, I'm not going to drink directly from the coolers. I've got my water purification tablets, a small pot in my pack that I can use to boil it as well. So far, I haven't started a fire since, you know, I'm indoors, but if it keeps getting colder, I might risk it. Sleeping shivering in my bag every night with those lights buzzing and the carpet squishing each time I turn is wearing me out. Alright, I'm going to try to do a better job of documenting my journey in case I need to refer back to the journal. Every time I enter a new room, I walk to the closest wall or column and mark a big circle in black sharpie. Hallways get arrows, pointing in the direction I'm walking at both the start and end. I haven't crossed my own trail yet, so that's good, though it kind of feels like I'm walking in circles. Another oddity worth noting, every dozen or so rooms, I keep finding clocks. None of them work, at least none of them work correctly. Some are frozen, some are ticking backwards. A few will have hands racing around in a circle so fast that they're nearly solid lines. I don't know what it means. I try not to look at the clocks for too long or get too close. They give me a headache if I stare. Time for another cold dinner and a colder night of half sleep. This is Todd signing out. August 17th or 18th or later? Vermont Backrooms, level 2. I don't know if they followed me or... <sighs> okay, okay, th this is nuts. I think I still hear them in the hall. They shouldn't be able to get in through the barricade. Thank God this room has more desks and chairs than usual. There's no way they can get in. They're too big. I bet they're mad I killed one. I'm rattled. <laughs> uh, I should start from the beginning. This needs to be a record of this trip. Do you remember the rats? The ones from the mall all tangled together? A squirming, snapping mass of wet knots? Well, there are rats here too. <laughs> big ones. That doesn't even begin... Okay, they're, they're as big as dogs. More Labrador than Chihuahua. I stumbled upon a nest of them two rooms back. I'm not sure how many there were in the office. Six? Eight? It was hard to tell. The room was darker than usual, at least with one of the lights flickering on and off. I should have been paying more attention, but days of endless corridors plus night after night of garbage sleep have dulled my senses. I was basically a walking zombie until I heard the first rat start shrieking. The moment hung in the air like a plate you knew was about to break but couldn't catch. Then it all went to hell. All of the super rats, or mega rats, gargantua rats, all started making this shrill hissing noise. I froze for longer than I should. Then I finally had enough sense to grab for my gun. I had to paw at the holster for a few seconds but I got it out just as the closest rat came at me. It was a big bastard, that rat. Even in the low light, I got a clear look at its face. The eyes made me freeze. Well, like a giant hissing rodent rushing at me wasn't enough, you know? But the eyes were the worst part. They were human, like the animal in the mall. Not just human, but familiar. They were the eyes of someone I knew. I'm sure of it. I just don't know who. When the rat tried to take a bite out of my calf, that was enough to shake me out of my funk. I jumped back its big yellow teeth just barely tearing a chunk of denim from my jeans. Then I mag-dumped the prick, emptying the gun nearly point-blank into the bloated thing. You should have seen it jerk and twitch, like somebody stuffed its guts full of fireworks and lit the cord. 
That freaked all the other rats out. Good thing, too, since the Glock was empty and my hands were shaking too hard for a good reload. The monsters scattered, and I ran straight ahead for the next hallway. As soon as I was in the adjacent office, I dragged over the biggest desk I could find and started the barricade. It was like this mania gripped me and I kept stacking up anything that wasn't bolted down. Within a few minutes, the hall was sealed from the floor to about four feet off the ground. I was able to reload too, which saved my life when the next rat came climbing over the debris. I didn't panic fire then. I measured my shots. At least three rats came over, maybe four. All of them were shot down, and all of them looked at me with those human, recognizable eyes. They all stared at me, not with anger or hate, but this incredible sadness. After the first wave, the rest of the rats seemed to run off. I reloaded, noticing that I was really eating into my ammo supply, and got ready to sprint in the opposite direction from the barricade. That's when I saw the black hallway. Pitch black, completely dark, but radiating. I don't know what it was radiating. Something bad. I could hear the rats chittering in the room on the other side of the barricade. They didn't sound eager to try to climb over again, but it was only a matter of time. I was stuck between rats and a dark place. So I doubled down on the barricade. I kept stacking it higher and higher. Chairs and desks and lamps and waste paper baskets went into it until the barricade reached the ceiling. I kept one eye on the dark hall the entire time. Nothing ever came out from it, but I couldn't shake the thought that it wasn't a hallway so much as a tunnel. No noise from the rats for the last hour. I'm sitting here now, with my back against the barricade, facing the hallway. I've run out of furniture, otherwise I'd consider creating a second wall over there, but then, of course, I'd be trapped. I'm not getting any sleep tonight, if it is even night. No way to tell. I know I need to keep moving forward, but updating the journal was a good way to waste time until I built up the nerve. Wish me luck. Late August. Vermont Backrooms. Level 2 or 3 or 1. I don't want to be here anymore. Please, please, no more. Late August. Vermont Backrooms. Level Unknown. I was in a bad spot there for a day or two, but I'm better now. I'm going to handle my shit. Dear future Todd, I know that you make it out of this and it's all like a bad dream now. One that fades away real fast when the sun comes up. I'm sure that's how this is going to go. Um, what have I missed since the last update? Uh, let me look back. Oh yeah, that damn hallway. Once I started hearing scratching sounds at the barricade, I decided it was time to risk the darkness. I walked slowly, flashlight and gun at the ready. The light might as well have been a brick for all the good it did me. The shadows in the hall barely moved under the beam, resisting and filling back in whenever I moved. The darkness was like a hungry animal nipping at the light, waiting for it to bleed away. I could only see a few feet in front of me as I advanced, but I noticed a lot with my other senses. The temperature was dropping and what little breath I could see was coming out of steam. There was a slight incline to the floor as well, and I felt myself climbing with every step. Oh, and the smell wasn't just mildew anymore, but a mix of wet dog and old meat. The hallway stretched on farther than I thought possible. After what felt like an hour, I saw a white speck develop in front of me. The more I walked, the larger and brighter the speck became. Other things were changing too. The incline got steeper. Then I bumped into the wall on my right side. A few steps later, I bumped into the wall on the left side, and then I hit my head on the ceiling. The hallway was closing in. That's when the panic came. I jumped backwards, ready to run back to the previous room, monster rats be damned, but I couldn't. Where there should have been an open hall leading back to the barricade, instead I immediately hit a wall in the darkness. It didn't make sense and I clawed at it, tried to find an opening in it, but all of that was useless. Somehow a dead end had snuck up on me. I was trapped. With no other choice, I turned around and walked forward toward the speck, which I saw then was a light. My shoulders kept hitting the walls as I moved. After a while, they were constantly brushing against both sides of the tunnel. It didn't feel like drywall anymore. Now it was porous, warm and wet. I stopped at one point to listen. There was this faint sound of moving air. When I placed a hand on the wall, I could feel it expand and retract slightly. It was like the tunnel was breathing. 
I tried going back one more time, but the wall was right there behind me, practically on my heels. It had followed me. I touched the wall again and noticed it was closer than a few seconds before, the sound of the air in motion getting louder. It clicked all at once that the tunnel was closing around me. I ran. The white spot ahead of me got larger as I went. It was a proverbial light at the end of the tunnel. The problem was that while the light got bigger, the walls around me were getting smaller and the ceiling was steadily creeping towards the floor. It got to the point where I couldn't run upright, so I bent over. Then I had to crawl. The walls were squeezing me tight enough to scrape my skin from my arms and face. I'm pretty sure I would have been screaming if I wasn't already hyperventilating. Things went from awful to even worse when I got stuck. That was a bad moment. Walls so tight around me I couldn't take a full breath. Feet kicking, one arm pinned against my ribs. I thought I was going to die, crushed to death, or even worse, left trapped and wheezing in the dark until I starved or went mad enough to bite off my own tongue. That's when I thought of the pack I was wearing. I shook that off like a snake escaping its skin. It was enough for me to squirm through towards the light. The walls continued to press in, but I was moving forward inch by inch, even as the opening in front of me became smaller and smaller. The light was blinding when I fell out of the hallway. It was a close thing. My left foot was stuck in the shrinking tunnel to the point where I had to yank it free, losing my shoe in the process. I lay on the carpet floor in the room at the end of the hall for a long time, just breathing and sobbing. When I finally looked back at where I'd come from, there was no sign of the hallway. There was only a blank wall painted a sick yellow beige. So all my gear is gone. Now I've just got what was on my body. Thankfully my recorder was in my pocket. Thank God for cargo pants, I guess. I've still got a flashlight, the Glock, I had a notepad and a few pens in a pocket, so that's good. Same with two protein bars and some trail mix. No water though. That's not great. Um, what else? Uh, some paracord, a knife, sharpie, backup pen light, small first aid kit, lighter. I'm just going to lay down for a minute, then talk about the mirror. August. Back rooms. So, the mirror. It was huge, taking up a big chunk of the opposite wall from where I came out of the tunnel. The glass was as tall as I was, and at least four or five feet wide. There wasn't anything else of note in the room, just the mirror, a slim hallway opposite from where I came out, and the lights. God, the lights were bright. It was warmer in the little room compared to the last few I'd gone through. I hardly noticed, though, because my eyes were locked on my reflection. It wasn't right. I wasn't right. Nothing in particular stood out as off. The reflection had my eyes, my hair, my dirt-stained clothes, my expression of fading tear from my recent escape, but when you took it all in as a complete picture, the image managed to hardly look like me at all. Maybe the eyes were too narrow one moment and too low the next. Same with all of my features. It was like an AI attempting to redraw my picture over and over, instant to instant. There was also a delay when I moved. Not even seconds, probably microseconds, just enough that I sensed a lag without truly being able to see it. The overall effect was unnerving. I would wave and then an almost instant later, the non-me reflection would mimic it. I'm not sure how long I stood, transfixed by the mirror, but when I finally snapped out of it, I hurried out of the room down the next hallway. As I left, I thought I heard a soft ripping sound from the room behind me. When I turned around though, it just looked like an empty space. August? Somewhere. I'm out of water, nearly out of food. I've been walking for hours? Days? Hard to tell when it's just hallway, office, hallway, office. I've been marking my progress, leaving sharpie arrows, but I'm starting to suspect that something might be messing with my trail. I keep finding smudges that might have once been arrows. Something might be in here with me. Something that wants me to stay lost. Uh, full disclosure, dear journal, I, I think I'm starting to crack a little. I keep cutting my rations in half and then half again to preserve the few bites of food I have left. As for water, yesterday I finally relented. I used one of the water coolers I keep encountering every few offices. I'm not an idiot, 
I didn't just put my mouth over the little plastic spigot and start chugging. I poured a measure of water into a mug I found while searching through one of the infinite number of desks that seemed to exist back here. Then I started a fire. My goal was to boil the water to make it safe as possible to drink. I didn't quite make it that far. I used my lighter and some torn up strips of carpet, plus waste paper from a nearby basket to get the fire going, but as soon as I nursed a weak flame to life, smoke began to rise, and that smoke hit the fire sprinklers that I hadn't even noticed above me. I heard the sprinklers kick to life, that familiar sound yanked my attention up. I instinctively closed my eyes, wincing against the expectation of water crashing down. There was a long moment of nothing before I hesitantly opened my eyes. A couple hundred gallons of water hung frozen above me like a curtain dropping in slow motion. It was a clockwork rain ticking down inch by inch but so slow. I stood up, my thirst temporarily forgotten. The water was moving but not like water. I jumped up, arm outstretched and managed to brush my fingertips against the droplets. They shattered like rain hitting the road but the drops continued to fall in slow motion. I remember standing in the room next to my small, pitiful fire for a long time, watching the water tick down. Time. Something's wrong with time in this place. It's not… it's not stable. The reflection, the water, it's just out of sync somehow. Too slow here, too fast there. Maybe that's why it feels like I'm walking in a closed loop. I'm time traveling in the most horrible way possible. Or maybe I just need some sleep. It's getting cold again and I'm thirsty. I put out the fire without boiling water from the cooler. I considered waiting for the liquid from the sprinkler to get a little closer so I could drink it, but I'm desperate, not crazy. Dear future Todd, if we get out of here, let's promise to avoid spooky shit for the rest of our lives. August. Back rooms. I caved a few hours ago. I drank out of one of the coolers directly. I was so thirsty, so damn thirsty. The water tasted like oil, slick and gummy. I think it left a film on my teeth, but it was cool and it made my throat open up. I've been throwing up for a while, but I think I'm going to be okay. The rooms and hallways all look the same, except I think there's a slight incline again. Maybe I'm walking towards another level. Summer, I think. I'm out of food and I have been for a while. Plenty of water though, all I can drink. I've stopped marking the hallways and rooms I've visited. It doesn't help anymore. Something is wiping away my marks. I saw it, or at least the shadow of it not long ago. It stood at the entrance to the hall I was walking down. A shadow that darted away as soon as I looked back. After a moment, it peeked back around the corner of the hallway. All of the lights in the office I just visited went out, so the thing was only a smear of black against more darkness. But I knew it was watching me, waiting to see if I'd go back down the hall to confront it. I didn't. I ran. Date and location unknown. I don't know if I'm getting out of here. I got lucky a few days ago. I found a new room, one full of vending machines. I'd never heard of any of the brands. There were candy bars called Daggerwoods chips called crackles, some kind of paste that came out of a black tube with no branding on it at all. I didn't care. I smashed the glass open and ate from every machine, stuffing myself until I vomited again. That keeps happening, but at least I'm alive. I washed down the strange feast by toppling over a soda machine and guzzling yellow and black cans of syrupy liquid with the words hum cola written across the front. That thing is still following me. Every time I go through a hallway, I can hear it creeping behind me, feet squishing against soggy carpet. For a while, I'd whip around trying to catch it only to see nothing. Now I don't bother. It seems content to just follow me. I see a light in the distance. My hope, my, my need, is that this has all been a trial of endurance. I keep pushing forward. I should be able to get out, right? I don't deserve this. I don't. Date and location? I don't know. I still see the light up ahead. It's getting bigger, but slowly. So slowly. Why, 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 why? I'm scared. I'm done. I don't want to be here anymore. Summer, 
probably back rooms okay okay i was falling apart yesterday but i've got a grip now i'm not going to let this beat me i'm not going down without a fight my stalker is getting closer but i still can't catch him when i look back I managed to work up the nerve to actually run down a hall I just crossed after I heard him creeping behind me. Once I got to the room at the end, it was pitch black. I listened carefully for any sign of the bastard. Nothing for a long time. And then, breathing. Almost wheezing. It was coming from the corner. I stood just listening for a long time, then it began moving towards me. That's when I ran. I didn't stop running until my legs gave out. Christ. What is this place? I passed out in a familiar looking room with one odd detail. There was a tiny plant on one of the grey, Ikea looking desks. When I fell asleep, I remember it being about the size of a coffee pot, this green little sprig. When I woke up, there was a giant oak tree in the middle of the room. It rose up through the ceiling, a trunk as wide as a Cadillac disappearing up into darkness, a thousand years of growth while I was asleep. A dynasty in the blink of an eye. Backroom's journal, part, part. I walked into a pitch black room earlier today. It was normal and well lit until my first foot left the hall. Then everything was black. I froze, waiting, terrified that I had heard the footsteps of my stalker running up behind me. That's not what I heard. What I heard was worse. After a long bell of silence, there was a sound of a woman sobbing in the dark. I guess she was in the middle of the room, but I couldn't tell. The crying grew louder and louder. I heard the scrape of a chair being dragged across the floor, more sobbing. Then the unique sound of rope being thrown over a rafter. That soft thump, louder sobbing, louder and louder as someone climbed onto the chair. I remember shouting, no. No, don't. There was silence. Then the most horrible scream. Coughing, choking, fighting, struggling. Then, more silence. After that, there was only this creaking noise. I went on my belly and crawled through the room until I bumped into the opposite wall. It felt like it took forever, but I wasn't willing to stand up. I just kept imagining feeling dangling feet brushing against my shoulders. Eventually, I found the start of the next hallway, and I crawled forward until the darkness faded. I've been in this room with its low light and the mold smell again for hours. I'm thirsty and hungry, but I don't want any more of anything from this place. There's still that light ahead. I'm not sure how many hallways and rooms I'd need to cross, but it's the only goal I have anymore. The creaking sound faded after I left that black room but I heard something worse following me up the hallway. It was quiet. It was familiar. It was laughing. <laughs> Last entry, I think. I caught up to the light just now. I was sprinting through the rooms by the end as it got brighter and brighter, and oh god, I'm going to die here. I'm going to die. The light, it was the mirror. That damn out-of-sync mirror from weeks ago, it was the same mirror with the same lagging reflection, only this time, that reflection wasn't even pretending to be me. It smiled while I screamed and tried to break the glass with a chair that only bounced off. There wasn't a scratch. I haven't had anything to eat or drink in days. I'm so tired. Too tired to keep going. I'm recording this last entry hoping that somehow this journal makes it out. I've got family, and I'm so sorry, Mom, Dad, and Lily. I know you'll think I disappeared, maybe that I ran away, but I want you to know, if you ever hear this, my last thoughts were of you. My reflection is watching me while I record this. It's not smiling anymore, but it's not me. It moves on its own. It acts like it's waiting. Something is laughing coming up the hall behind me. It's creepy tiptoeing like some cartoon villain. Now my reflection is looking behind me at whatever is coming towards the room. I hope it's quick. Please, God, let it be quick. <laughs> August 15th, 10am, Vermont Shopping Center, Fountain. 
I'm not sure what I got so worked up about. Everything is fine. I made it out of the back rooms. Heck, I wasn't even really lost. Just turned about. I'm good now. Everything is fine. In fact, I feel better than ever. More people should take a stroll through Vermont. Gosh, it's a beautiful place. Such a shame the mall was abandoned. Maybe we can get some traffic going through again. You know, visitors set up Santa for the little kids on Christmas. <laughs> I feel great, really, but ugh, did I have a weird moment earlier. I saw someone familiar by the fountain. I don't think they could see me, which sure was peculiar. You know what's even weirder though, for some dang reason, I found myself yelling at them to run. <laughs> Isn't that wild? Why would I do that? Why would anyone run away from Vermont? It was wacky. I'm going to go ahead and follow this fellow, and make sure he's alright. It's nice to have company. <laughs> I don't think I'll need this anymore. I'm going to toss this little audio log in the wishing well. Do you want to know my wish? It's this. Dear future Todd, I wish you were here, and I hope you'll stay. Forever. <laughs> Evidence note. Journal discovered August 15th, 2022, by a weekly sweep team assigned to the Vermont Mall Anomaly. There have been no signs of human or natural wildlife within the facility since the reacted incident. The lab cannot confirm any of the information found within the journal, though the account is consistent with what was learned after the debriefing of survivors from Management's recommendation is to increase sweeps to twice per month for the next three months. It's unknown how the owner of the journal made it past the quarantine around Vermont. A concerning possibility is that the anomaly is extending beyond the previous known parameter and creating new paths that circumvent our seal. We've opened discussion on sterilizing the mall and the surrounding town. Please advise.